Hey everyone, Nathan here from PH Studios, and welcome back to another networking tutorial from PH Studios. And uh, this is using XNA, and we're just going to continue off where we were our last tutorial, which was getting the communication set to where one client was able to receive information from another client. So now what we need to do is we need to get the clients to be able to send messages to the server. So for right now, we just have the server able to communicate to the clients, but we need it the other way around to do the uh, appropriate work. So if you look at the relay server code, I mentioned that in the uh, first few videos that I put the link in there for the code. Uh, the relay server, what we basically do is we use a write stream, which is a memory stream, and a writer, which is a binary writer. So we set the write stream's position to zero, and then we use a writer to write the information, and then we call this send data, and then we need to get data from memory stream, and then we pass it to the send data method. So as I mentioned in the first few videos, the we're using the server because everything is built into the system.net.sockets. So the way that the server sends data is the way that the clients need to send data. So we're just going to keep on looking at the server a few times, and then we can replicate how it's sending and receiving data. Okay, so that being said, we need a memory stream and a binary writer in our client code. So if we go ahead and go to our simple networking game here, let's go to the very top where we have all of our uh, stuff. So we have a reader and a read stream. Now we need a writer and a write stream. And then a binary reader, we need a binary writer. All right. So in the initialize method, we need to initialize the uh, write stream and the uh, writer. Okay, so now that those are both initialized, we need to create a way to send data. So for testing purposes, whenever a whenever we receive a uh, connected protocol, let's go ahead and send some information. So we need to set write stream dot position is equal to zero. We need to zero out the position if we wrote anything before. And then we call writer dot write. Let's just say hello world. So let's just write a string value and then we can send it. So then if we go back to the server, we actually need to get the data from the memory stream. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. And we can actually copy and paste this here. So copy the uh, entire method. So we need to convert it to a byte array. So we go back to the uh, game here and paste it anywhere you want. And then we're actually going to get data from the memory stream. So we pass a memory stream. Then when you have a byte array called result, then we're going to lock the memory stream. And then we need to get the int, the memory stream's position. And then we get the result. And then we get the, uh, we initialize the array basically to the bytes written integer. So we size it based on the position that this memory stream is. Then we set it back to the position because we need to read it now. We, I mentioned that in the previous video that it's kind of weird that you need to read a writer just like we had to write to a reader and that sort of thing. Uh, so we need to set it back to zero because we do need to read it and then it will convert it all to a byte array and then we just return that array. So that's basically all that method does. We need to convert it to a byte array because we need to send it as a byte array. So if we go back to the server and we'll look at the send data method. And then we go to the client.send data. So we send it based on the client.getStream.begin write, and then we pass it this information here. So I'm going to copy and paste this information here and then go back to our uh, game. 
And I'm going to paste it below, just below that. And then I'm going to delete this try catch. I'm sorry, I'm going to delete the line that was in the catch. So it's just going to be an empty catch statement. So, like I mentioned in the previous videos, everything is 90% of what we're doing is built into the TCP client or the TCP listener uh, that's coming from the system.net.sockets. So that's what the client is for. That's why we can use almost exactly the same code as in the server and as in the client. So we send data and that sends it to the server. Now the server is what handles how it distributes the message to the other clients. So we just need to send it to the server and then that's it. Alright, so now we need to actually send it. So we call, we write, we wrote hello world to the writer. Now we need to say send the data. And then we need to get data from memory stream. Uh, write stream. Oops. All right, so now we need to send that information to the server, and then we need to get the data from the memory stream, and we are using the write stream in this case. All right, so that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and run this game. Press F5 to run it. We see that it has been connected. Now I'm going to start the Telnet server because we do not have a way to uh, process anything. Alright. See? That sent a new message and just look at what the Telnet received. Hello world, explanation point, and the address and the port number. So we just sent hello world and the server took that message, appended the server ID and the IP address and then sent that back to the other client so we can know who sent it. That's just gearing us up for three players, four players, just any number above two because with two players it's rather simple. If you receive information you know it's from the second player and uh, that's just really simple to do. So anyway, a new player connected. We have two players up on the top and the bottom. And when that process occurred, we sent the information from the game to the server, which sent it to the Telnet client, and that said, hello world. Alright, so now that being said, we actually need to go ahead and send the information to multiple games. So we just need two different games to communicate instead of one Telnet server. Alright, so instead of sending hello world, we need to actually send a new player protocol. And we already have that built in the uh, protocol, so let's go ahead and set game one. Now, depending on how you want to do this, if we receive a byte protocol that is connected, we, get, we store it in the enemy, and then we send it again, the byte protocol. So, think about that for a second. We receive a connected protocol, we create a new enemy, and then we send a connected protocol. So if you can think about that for a minute, we will create an infinite loop, basically. So we receive a connected protocol, we send a connected protocol. Player 2 receives a connected protocol, it sends a byte connected protocol. Player 1 receives that connected protocol, again, it sends another one. So we can either do, create another brand new protocol, like our something to notify that player two, that player one was connected all on, or we can see if enemy is not equal to null, then we send it. So if enemy is not equal to null, or I'm sorry, if enemy is equal to null, then we need to send it. So if enemy is equal to null, we create a new enemy, we set its information, then we send it the protocol dot connected. Okay. Uh, it's actually a byte. 
Alright, so now we send it the connected protocol, and then it should be sent to the other player. So now if we press F5, alright, and now let's go ahead and get to the game on uh, samples, trunk, simple networking game, we need to go to bin, x86, debug, then run the game. There we go. So, that's progress. So now two games now have two players. So, I believe that's it for this tutorial. We covered the topic of this tutorial, which was getting the communications. Uh, looks like player two has an issue with the bottom player. There we go. Okay, so we were able to get the two games to communicate, which we did last tutorial, but we were able to send a re-authentication message to the new player that connected, that player one was connected on lawn. Now, to stop it from creating an infinite uh, message cycle, we just had it send, if enemy is equal to null, it will send a message, all right? So then player 2 receives it, it sets up enemy, and then it sends it back. And at that point, it'll stop because enemy is not equal to null at this point, and it won't send it again. So it will send it three times. Player 2 sends it to player 1. Player 1 sends it to player 2. Player 2 sends it to player 1, and then that's where it stops. All right, next tutorial, we will get to movement, and we'll actually build on the protocols. So um, movement will be next to process when a player has moved. All right, I hope to see you next time.